Hello everyone out there. Um, coming to you today again uh, with another video. Uh, today is the last section of the evils of Apple. Um, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. Um, this one is is pretty short. So this is not going to be as long as the video. It's pretty short. Um, also, but first before I get started with that, I wanted to um, a couple of things that a, a couple of new things that I just come across with um, uh, help of um, Watchmen for you and. Um, there on YouTube and um, one thing that I forgot to mention in the last video but I want to get to what uh, Watchman for you uh, sent me a message and and brought to my attention and I think it it, it bears really good um, it, it should go really good with uh, the second section about uh, Genesis of the internet and and the computer part um, he pointed out that if you ever notice the um, keyboard of a computer or a PC looks very much like a Ouija board. There's three uh, lines of, of letters and there's uh, one line of numbers um, and the mouse is like the oracle that you move around and you point to things, right? I thought that was very interesting and um, and one thing after he said that um, oh well first let me get this also um, the Ouija board is connected to a medium, which is us, and, and to demons, you know, because it's basically demons that you're communicating with through this Ouija board. So we're the medium in it, and it um, and it works through the ether, which is the air, right? And the same thing like on your computer, all of them have um, um, ethernet ports. So he pointed that out, and I thought that was incredible, you know, that's awesome. So special thanks to him for that. And also we, if we look in Ephesians 2.2 2, it says, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So that kind of shows that with the ether, the air part. And also what I kind of put with it, when I thought about the Ouija board, one of the first things that came to my mind was it on the Ouija board it says, hello, and goodbye right now it made me remember like back in the day with AOL you know because AOL every time it came on hello and then when it would go for goodbye you know like so I thought about I was like man that's like almost an example that, that they was right in front of plain sight that they were using you know to to deceive us with um, he also pointed out that Google is like a spirit a spirit guide um, it's where you get your questions from um, just kind of like the Ouija board um, so special thanks again to him for that because um, I thought that was really interesting um, the one thing I left off with the 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 last video same old fruit new idols I totally forgot to mention about the um, um, in April 1st uh, 1976 um, is when Apple started and 1776 is when Illuminati started um, well also if you think just about the name iPad um, iPhone um, the it's really like the all-seeing eye phone you know I mean because we're you we know that every picture you take every video you take um, belongs to Apple once you do that it's also um, like the NSA and all of them they can look through your camera and see you you know 24 hours a day whether you know it or not they can monitor you and watch you that's their all-seeing eye that's watching you see that and that's the iPhone iPad that's what they're all seeing iPad and phone and, and you know what's crazy this is kind of a little bit of confirmation for me which makes me feel good um, I was going to work today because we're at a carpet cleaning place and me and my boss were going and we were driving and in and, and the, the town where we were going to clean the carpets we passed by a church and you know how churches they have outside of them you know like a little like I forget what they're called, but they but they put stuff on them with those big letters, and they'll say different things, you know, um, like just just different things. And and um, this one said, iPad, iPhone, try, I pray. So I was like, whoa, that's confirmation, you know, that I'm putting these videos out, that, that and uh, some people are watching them and appreciating them, and then boom, I get this right in front of me, you know, what what's the odds of a church putting something like that out, you know, iPad, I pray, uh, iPad, iPhone, try, I pray, 
right? I mean, like, I was like, that's just confirmation, you know, that other people are kind of, you know, maybe feeling this thing too, that, that instead of being obsessed with your iPhone or iPad, why don't you try to pray, <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so those were a couple of things that I left off and new things that I got, so um, I decided to put it on here. Um, this section is called, and this might make some people upset, but I don't care. Um, it's the truth. Um, it, it this section is called "You Have No Business on the Phone with Them," <laughs> and and so I um, so it comes down to this. So I guess the question comes to what do we do, right? We we've learned this stuff about the internet. We've learned this stuff about. Um, 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 Apple and and all these other things so what do we do well it's an easy answer stop buying Apple products just stop buying them you know um, and and the Bible tells us this the Bible tells us this in 2nd Corinthians 6 14 through 18 it says be ye not unequally oaked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness and what um, concord hath Christ with Baal? That means the devil. Or what do, what part hath he that believeth with a infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Okay, we are the temple of God. What business do we have with idols? Um, idols. See, I forgot to point that out too. Idols. iPhone. iPad. It's right in front of your face. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and ye, and will be a father unto ye, to you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Okay, that pretty much says it all. And you know, um... I don't go for the other translations anymore, but the, one of the other translations says, what business do you have? You know, don't don't be, un, it says don't have any business with them, <laughs> literally business. Um, but, you know, I mean, it just, it's, it's what we have to do, uh, it's what we have to do to stop their to business with Christians. And if we if we do this through the power of Jesus's name and with the Holy Ghost uh, leading, we can influence even unbelievers to trash or burn these evil devices and tell and, and tell them and and bring them the gospel. So even unbelievers, you know, we need to to let them know this information so that they can and you know maybe even come to Christ through understanding this. And, you know, some people may say that it's a little bit radical what I'm saying about trashing them or burning them or destroying them. But if you look, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Um, I, I would like, hopefully, that some of y'all would go and, and read it. Like, So I'm just going to put out like certain things about a, a couple of chapters in the Bible today. Um, like Acts 19. Uh, it's good if you go read the whole thing. But I just wanted to share a couple of verses about it. Um, um, and then I'll, I guess I'll start with... Uh, Paul basically... Um, he, he, um, he asked them if they'd been baptized with uh, the Holy Ghost and... Um, and they say that they've been baptized by John and, and this other stuff. And he tells them to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. And then he goes down and it, it says like in verse 12 um, that evil spirits went out of them and departed. And then if we, I'll start at 16 and go into it. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that, so that they fled out of, of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and to the Greeks also dwelling in uh, Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Now listen to this. Um, listen to this because this is the, the main part. And many that believed came and confessed and, sh and shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used um, uh, cursor arts 
um, brought their books together and burned them all, burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So they just, the power of God was such on them from seeing like the evil spirits and, and being driven out, and then what what Paul Paul giving the Holy Spirit and all this stuff that it. it that it mindedly, the Spirit of God moved on them so mindedly, and they believed so strongly in, in Christ that they that they took their cursor arts, which kind of reminded me of you know the cursor your your cursor that you're touching with the on the screen and all that. They took all that, they took their books and and they burned them because they weren't glorifying God and they weren't good because they were witchcraft and different things, and and so mindedly grew the word the, the word of God and prevailed. Okay, so. And you can read the rest of it too. It talks about the rest that the it, um, that they other that the other people get upset and want to um, do harm to Paul and them because they cast out spirits and it cost them money. So you see that these people burned all these things and it cost them um, fifty thousand pieces of silver. And then later on, you read down in the chapter. I got some, uh, you read later on down in the chapter um, that the. Um, a silversmith um, did sh uh, shrines for Diana, and, and it was a craft and all this other stuff, and it cost them money. And because it cost them money, they got upset, and they tried to do harm to to Paul, and 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 it's it shows that that could happen. You know, um, Acts 19 is a perfect example of how the power of Jesus' name and the gospel can cause unbelievers to repent and bring their evil tools to be burned. The uh, the hit in the pocketbook of Apple, like in verse nineteen, um, verse nineteen will cause will cause a backlash, of course. And Apple is known for its um, aggressive um, uh, litigation, um, but with God on our side, we can we can make a difference. So I kind of put that there because yeah, I mean there could be like repercussions for what I'm saying and what I'm doing, and but to me that gives great. Um, confidence and peace of God because these things have already gone on what's done has been done there's nothing new under the sun you know like what all these type of things have already been done and and destroyed in the past and, and Satan just keeps bringing them back up again and there might be consequences for the things that I say um, with some with these type of companies and things but I'm not scared just like Paul wasn't scared just like them, you just don't back down from it because even if you're persecuted for righteousness sake it's good you know it's it's good so and if it and if you're worried about the money and all that I mean these people weren't worried about the money when they when they um, um, burned and, and destroyed all their things okay now let's look at Exodus 32 most people most people know um, this one and it's another example of how you know I'm not gonna read the whole thing of course I hope y'all would go and, and read it and look at it and compare it to what I'm saying in these times but um, um, it, you know it's the golden calf and they took the golden earrings and they they made an idol and they destroyed it well it came down later and it was destroyed right um, and that, to me, is an example of, of what's going on, too. Uh, we all know this story, and and I'm just trying to do what Moses did. Uh, stand in the gap between God and his people worshiping idols. God loves us and wishes only uh, the best for us. And sometimes the thing, the things we, we think we love and need are the complete opposite of God's wants and ways. I know it's hard to break from something you, you have spent so much money on and makes your life more uh, convenient, but it's the devil on your hip. It's, um, it's got you so distracted from other people, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. It's crazy. Uh, think about think about think about it you can think about it you can be having a conversation about God the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost and, it, and the Holy Ghost can be moving and touching people all around you and if your phone vibrates or your phone rings the first thing you want to do is grab it right that's the first thing you want to do it's a complete distraction tool for Satan um, and his new gods of gold um, and that's like in here in Exodus 32. That's what it says. It says it's gods of gold. Um, and 
And it's crazy because also in verse 17, uh, when Joshua heard the noise of the people as, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of, of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for, for magistry, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing, that, uh, that sing do I hear. So do you see how Joshua was so in tune with God and Moses was so in tune with God that they heard warfare, just like I see that this is warfare with this iPhone and it's spiritual warfare that I see that's going on with this company and this and, and these iPhones and these iPads and, and it's the same way they heard warfare Joshua and Moses but when they got closer they're like oh well it's not it's it's singing and dancing it's entertainment that that is the war is the spiritual warfare and and that's what we're dealing with with now with the same thing with these new gods of gold um, Ephesians 5 7 says so in uh, uh, be be not ye therefore partakers with them right that's what Ephesians 5 7 says don't be partakers with them so in closing I just uh, I just want to say uh, short and sweet um, spit out the forbidden fruit that that started all this hurt and sin and seek your knowledge from God in the in in the times you you use that iPhone Pick up your Bible, read it, and I guarantee you, you will be blessed by Abba Father for it. Um, so that's the end of the whole lecture. I hope um, that y'all enjoyed it and that it was enlightening to you and that it did uh, hopefully move on your heart and, and, and get you to not want to participate with this company and these devices of Satan. Um, I'm going to redefine, like I said before, and go over the videos again. Um, please always, like, just leave me some comments and tell me what you feel about it and um, any ways I can, I can improve on it. Um, and please leave me any, you know, um, things that maybe I've left out, like like Watchmen for You does. I mean, I appreciate him for doing that because it the we all are sharing collective information from God. Nothing we say is new. Like I said, no. What's done has been done. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing I'm saying is new. You know, I mean, n nothing anyone says is new. I mean, because really, on only knowledge either comes from, from Satan, the world, or it comes from God. So nothing we, we're saying is any new. We all share each other's information and, and put our own, you know, um, twist and, and, and understanding on it. And, um, and that, that's what makes it, a, you know, a blessing. Is that we can all share this information um, lightning calm down um, but yeah so thank you just leave me any comments and God bless y'all um, wake and watch for Yeshua God is love and I love God amen